inside bar trading strategy. Now you ask, what's an inside bar? Well, let's, before we get to the inside bars, let's talk about Japanese candlesticks for a minute. Now, most people who enter the Forex and CFD in the online trading market jump right to candlesticks. They take a couple of classes, they read a couple of books, and they think they got it down pat. Well, most of those classes, most of those courses, most of those webinars, including mine on the in introduction to candlesticks, gives you a lot of information that is pretty useless. Because what we teach is candlestick recognition or candlestick patterns. And although these patterns have been around for hundreds of years, and they work fairly well in a much slower paced market. I mean, if you're buying stocks, if you're trading commodities, not in a CFD format, not when you're just trading for a couple pips one way or another, candlestick formation and the patterns they give you can work extremely well. But in our fast paced online trading market, they don't work as well because what you're doing is you're just memorizing when this candle happens, that candle happens, that candle happens, they, they come together, you do this. And so that you understand it, I've given you in a handout on your screen, the candlestick cheat sheet. That shows you the top 36 candlestick patterns how they come out and what you're supposed to do with them and how they're supposed to make, you know, help you trade. And that is simply me memorizing and mastering pattern recognition. But for us, it doesn't really help that much because we have to be more concerned with price and fast paced moving assets. So there's many other ways to use candlesticks because candlesticks are a great tool. Now, one of those ways, and there are a lot, there's the indecision candles, there's tons of them, okay? There's tons of different strategies that employ different candlestick patterns or different candlestick reactions. I firmly believe that price action and, and seeing what price is doing is the only thing that's gonna help you. And candlesticks can help you see exactly what price is doing. So, we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna describe as the inside bar. So as the name implies, an inside bar forms inside of a large candlestick called a mother bar. Great name, mother bar. It's a pattern that forms after a large move in the market and represents a period of consolidation. This is why trading this pattern can be so profitable. You are essentially buying or selling a breakout or a continuation of the preceding trend. So notice how the second candle in the image is completely engulfed or contained by the previous candle. Here is the last candle, preceding candle. This is the current candle. And if you notice the entire body of the candle, and this is called the body, is inside the body of the previous candle. So if you imagine this is mama here, and this is baby candle or the inside bar candle. Baby candle is within mama's, not her neck and her legs, but inside mama's body. So the inside bar or the baby candle is completely contained by the high and the low of the previous candle. Here is the high, here is the low, here is the entire candle, and here is baby candle. So notice how the second candle in the image is completely engulfed or contained by the previous candle. In this case, the bearish candle or the mother bar represents a broader downtrend, while the bullish candle, the inside bar, represents a consolidation after a big decline. Keep in mind that there can be more than one candlestick 
that forms and is also fully engulfed by the candlestick to the left. So you can have times where you have mama candle here, and then you can have baby candle here, and you can have another baby candle here, and you can have another baby candle here, because all of these are fully contained within mama. So at the minimum, it requires two candlesticks, two complete sessions. So you have always the mama candle and baby candle, but you can have mama candle and twins, quadruplets. So as you can see here, we have many different slight variations, but they're all with the same definition. And so we have the mother bar and the inside bar. The mother bar and the inside bar, and then the mother bar and the inside bar. They're all fit the exact same definition, but sometimes you have great big candles, sometimes you have little candles. And they're the opposite color. And that is quite important. So what does the inside bar indicate? So in our graphic over here to the right, we have a strong bullish candlestick, right? Sorry. Okay, before we go on any farther, I need to explain something that some, especially new traders don't understand. Okay. Because candlesticks were around a long, 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 long time, since the 1700s. They were used by rice traders. But when I started trading, we didn't have computerized trading. We didn't. Have, we had some computers. Nobody had a PC. It was unheard of. Windows was unheard. You had this huge air-conditioned room that we called the computer room that nobody went into except the one guy who ran it. There's a couple of people. And then you had this big fat monitor on a desk that was green in MS DOS, and you had a choice. You want to see this report. You want to see that report. You push the button and it would give you, but you really couldn't program anything there. It was programmed by the guy who handled the computer. And that was it. So we didn't have computerized training. We didn't have computerized charts. And back in those days, we sat in the pits and we had notebooks, binders with graph paper. And we only traded a few assets. I was only trading livestock back in those days. and you would sit there with your graph paper and your pencil and you would draw each, and I'm a bar chart trader, I traded from bars. Most people did. Some people used candlesticks. And so in those days, we would put the high, the low, the open, the close, and form the candlestick. Now, if it was a bullish session, means the open was lower than the close, it closed higher than it started, it's a bullish session, we would just leave that candlestick blank. If it was a bear session where the open was higher than the close, so the price fell during that session, we would use the side of the pencil and color in that candlestick. So a lot of graphic representation and a lot of even names of the particular candlesticks are using the black and white. So like if you hear about three black crows, three white soldiers, Today, because of computers, and today with the HTML chart, we can actually make them candlesticks any color we want. But they tend to come with the tendency of now green is replaced the empty candlestick, and that's a bear, bullish session. And red, or in the old days, black was the bearer session. So like here, you see this colored in green, which is the bullish, and the black candle over here isn't just because somebody just drew a black, it's because that is the bearer session. So when you see black and white, you should think red and green. So here, black is red, white is green. So let's step back one more second to be more precise. What is the details of a 
inside candle because in this case the details do matter because you have to get it exactly right before you can get a trade set up or, or use it to make a decision. So let's assume our green mother bar here is the largest one in the recent price action on the chart. The market has moved with momentum and the next candlestick on the chart can't take out the previous bar high and low. We can say that volatility has dipped or has dried up and at this point, or at least it is not as strong as it was in the previous period. Right. Well, that's a fairly good solid assumption. So let's break down this inside bar for more detail. So we have the basic four components. We have the high, the low, and the open, and the, the high, the low, the open, and the close. This is what makes up every candle. So the inside candle focuses on the absolute range. The absolute range is the extent from the high to the low. Because there's a belief that when prices are moving up, they should be closing pretty close to the high. When prices are falling, they should be closing pretty low to the low. I don't know where that's coming from, okay. So what is an inside bar, an inside candlestick? This happens as the move is digested. Remember, we have traders using all different time frames so that we could have traders taking profit from longer time frames, momentum traders bailing out because there was no follow through, contrarians who were doing, so you have all types of people taking different positions. Now, there are more reasons, of course, but we can't cover all of those scenarios. Just the higher level ones. Understand that when you see this type of candlestick pattern, whether you're Forex trading or trading stocks, you're looking at inside bar trading types of setups that depend on momentum showing up to carry the price through the high and the low of the previous candlestick. The candlestick looks strong because it's one of the only two candlesticks shown. We can say with confidence, strong bullish if the green candlestick is larger than most of the price action. That would have formed on the left. Right. But when we have to look at it in a real chart with lots of things going on, okay, we have to see it's not so obvious. So we have to see what defines that inside bar candle. Now remember, Trading this inside bar at this point isn't going to do you much good because the markets are already here because you can only trade here at the wall. So you have to see it here. But remember, we're talking about the ultimate price. So we're talking about the high and the low. And then we're looking at the next candles. So once we've defined the high and the low, we can see we have two candles, one after another. Now we could have just had one. In this case, we have two that are fully contained within that previous move. So a golden rule that you should follow is tra trading with inside bars. Is do not trade an inside bar in isolation. Do not just say, oh, look, we got this, this, and trade. You need to be looking at all of price action. And we need to look at the psychology behind the inside bar. Since the inside candle has a lower high and a higher low than the previous candle on the chart, this indicates that the asset is consolidating. So what is consolidating? It is consolidating because the bulls cannot manage to create a higher high. At the same time, the bears fail to create a lower low. As such, there is not enough buying or selling pressure to break the previous candles high or low. So let me share with you a little presentation that might explain it to you a little bit better. And then we'll go on and look at this on a real chart.
So as most of us know, a basic candlestick is made up of a high and a low, which indicates the complete range on the day, as well as the open and the close, which can tell us a bit about momentum, as well as who is in control of the day, whether it was the bulls or the bears. So the inside bars focus on the absolute range. We're concerned with the high and the low, not necessarily the open and the close. And what this shows us is that a range is tightening. We have a lower high and a higher low forming. So an inside bar is when the range of a candlestick fits completely within the range of the previous candlestick showing a tightening range. So here is our mother bar. That is what we refer to as the candlestick with the larger range. And then the inside bar comes after it and it forms a tightening range. If the inside bar were to come on the left side of the candlestick, that does not count because we want to show through time that the range is tightening. We have a lower high and a higher low forming and it's usually accompanied by a decline in volume and it shows us that an equilibrium is being reached. Now, why does the high and the low matter? Because of that equilibrium. It's a tightening range. And if you were to zoom in on any time frame, and you will see these inside bar patterns on every time frame. So if you were on the hourly time frame and seeing inside bars, if you zoomed into the five minute time frame, you would see higher lows and lower highs with a tightening range. And that leads to a point, a flex point, where we eventually have a break because you cannot get any tighter once we see the range just shrink, 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 and then we have our break. And on that break is when we see a break and a spike in volatility with momentum as well. And it's significant because it gives traders a heads up what to watch for on that break. It's usually declining volume, as I said, the tightening range, and the break is with a spike in volume. Oftentimes, I recognize that a break is about to occur, not only because the price level is so very clear, but it's because the volume spike is accompanying it. So what we're looking at for a break of the inside bar, let's say these two candlesticks have completely formed. We have the range of the inside bar, and on the third candlestick, if we break the high of the inside bar, it's a bull break. And if we break the low of the inside bar, it is a bear break. So it is the price level, the high and the low that we are looking at to indicate the trade. Now, how do inside bars work? They develop in strong market conditions after breakouts or breakdowns. So you see a strong breakout. You see the price slow down and trade sideways while we consolidate. Here's an example right here where we have a large range candlestick on a breakout. Then we see a smaller range and a tighter range, two inside bars in a row before we finally get a bull break and continuation. So in this example, the bullish signal for entering the trade would have been the break on the second inside bar. As soon as the high of that inside bar broke, that's your bull signal looking for continuation to the upside. So the inside bar pattern by definition is showing us consolidation is occurring. And obviously consolidation most often occurs after a big move to the upside or a big move to the downside. So you can look at these and look at the macro or micro version. So the macro is the zoomed out version with just a few candlesticks. If this were the daily time frame here and we zoomed in, this is a micro version where we have, let's say these are half an hour candlesticks and it shows us rather than just a few candlesticks showing us highs and lows, this is showing us the range in between the highs and the lows tightening range. It often occurs with triangle patterns or pennant patterns, but you don't even need to be aware of these trend lines because it's the high and the low that we are concerned with. And these trend lines are just a bit of a guide to show us when the flex point is coming as to when the break is most likely to occur because we are running out of space and it's getting tight to the point where we know a break is imminent. So that's why these inside bars alerts are so significant because it tells us, pay attention, things are tightening up. We're going to see a volume spike and a breakout from this tight pattern that we are currently in. And it's going to indicate the direction that momentum is heading. In this first example of inside bars, we're going to be looking at Apple on the daily time frame, and this was coming after a gap up on earnings back in February of 2017. So that is the preceding action being volatile and a strong move to the upside with big volume accompanying it. After that plays out, we see the volume drop off over the next two days and the range tightens. So the following day was an inside bar. You can see the high and the low completely feed, fitting within the high and the low of the previous day, which is the mother bar. So we have our mother bar, our inside bar. Next day was another higher low, lower high inside bar for the second day in a row. Volume dropped off again, just barely. And then on the third day, of this pattern, actually the fourth day, we see a bull break over the high of the previous day and it comes with an increase in volume. And then from there, it showed us bull momentum and the bulls continue to the upside. So we see a very clear pattern and this is a very simple pattern. Once you get it down, you can pick out these inside bars very easily visually by looking at the chart. 
So multiple inside bars in a row. If it, we were to look at it on the hourly time frame, here is the run up on earnings. And then this is when the consolidation begins. It's a tightening range. We're trading sideways. Look at the volume. Each period of volume is lower, lower, lower. And then it spikes with the bull break here. So we had our high of the original bull move, our low on the consolidation, our lower high then formed, our higher low, lower high, higher low, there's our break. So a way that I visually mark these out a bit better is I put some lines where the candlesticks ranges top out. So I can see the lower highs, higher lows, and then we just patiently wait for that break and getting a little cluttered in there. So I would remove that one because this is the top of the inside bar, the most recent one. And then there's our bull break on the candlestick. As soon as we break above the previous high, and that is a volume spike and then momentum Look at momentum go. It's up to the upside. So on the daily time frame, the high of this third, second inside bar was at 129.19. As soon as we break 129.19, that is the bull signal for entering a trade. And then we see the follow through. Now, that all sounds very, very simple. But the fact is, there are some characteristics that matter. Because you can't just randomly see this happen and then jump in and, and trade and you'll eventually lose your butt. So if we can agree that there is no edge in simply selling or buying areas where inside bars show up, what type of strategy can we use? We can use any type of trading strategy. It's not an inside bar trading strategy though. We are not trading the inside bar. We are trading location, structure, market mechanics, and using the inside bar as a trading entry strategy. So remember, location is just not for real estate. And this is a vital distinction. When we see that inside bar, it's also marking us our entry point. And then we have to wait for the, to, for the next bar to reach that price, whether it's up or down, to make an entry. Okay, But we still have to understand and evaluate where we are in this world. Because otherwise, we're just going to make terrible mistakes. We're going to be more or, more or less guessing. So look for inside bars to show up in areas where we can expect some type of price action. In other words, by having support and resistance lines on your chart. As an inside bar, if an inside bar develops right on your support line or right on your resistance line, that makes it a lot more valid. And then if it breaks up, it gives you a bullish break off of support, you then have a very, very good opportunity. So look for inside bars around support and resistance levels at either side of the trading range, even at the end of pullbacks against the trend. So remember that inside bars show us a lack of volatility as the move is digested. We are looking for a relieving of that pressure that builds up in consolidation to get us into a trade at a favorable location on the chart. So let's go step by step. First, on this chart, we saw a top. Okay. That was the highest price that the, the range had made okay. in, in the run up of price. Okay. We don't have an inside bar. We don't have a mother bar. We don't have anything as of yet. We see price push back into resistance, but we do not see the follow through, which is something we'd expect to see at at least a few candles later. Price has broken the support level that formed around B and price has pulled back towards what we may be potential resistance. But again, we do not still, we're only reading price action yet because we don't have a mother bar and a baby bar, but, but we have to be reading what the price is telling us. What we're looking for is something to tell us okay, we could enter a trade and what price we should enter that trade. So let me show you this in a, on, a live, on a chart so we can actually see what you're looking at. On this next example, we're looking on this next example, we're looking at gold on the hourly time frame, and we're going to find an inside bar here. We can see we're in an uptrend of higher lows and higher highs. 
We're trading sideways and consolidating, and we're looking for a break. And here is an inside bar. So we can see the range here of this candlestick is 1241.97 is the low. 1244.01 is the high. And the next candlestick on declining volume fits completely within that range. As soon as the high of this inside candlestick breaks, that is our bull signal. It comes with a little uptick in volume. And then the move that follows it shows the bulls have significant momentum to the upside. So as soon as the high of this inside bar breaks at 1243.66, that is our bullish entry. And if we were to zoom out and look at it on the five minute time frame, it looks a bit different where we have our high, low, lower high, higher low, lower high, tight, tight, tight bull break on increasing bull volume and then follow through to the upside so same scenario where i would be drawing the high and the low of the most recent inside bar to be watching that is the range of the daily candlestick that formed as the inside bar and then as soon as we saw that move to the upside we saw a couple hours of follow through with big time momentum favoring those bulls. now we talk about the daily and the hourly but you could be using an hour chart to isolate them and a 15 minute chart to actually see them in more detail. There are five things that you want to look for when evaluating an inside bar pattern. Think of this as a checklist for trading inside bars. First, time frame matters. Now, for our type of trading, you can look at a four hour chart, then a one hour chart, and then a 15 minute chart. So or just let's stick with the one hour. Take the one hour, find when an inside bar, mother bar and an inside bar form, draw your, your tops and bottoms of the mother bar, and then convert it over to a 15 minute. And those two lines you just drawn on there give you, and you can watch it when it breaks out of that range in the 15 minute chart. And that's where you would enter for our type of trading. So first and foremost, the time frame you use to trade inside bars is extremely important. As a general rule, any time frame less than the daily should be avoided for this strategy, except when you're trading in our type of market. This is because the lower time frames are influenced by noise. So you don't want to go down to a half hour and 15 minutes. An hour is the lowest you should go. You might even try a two hour or a four hour. An inside bar that forms in a higher time frame has more weight because, simply because the pattern took more time to form. So second, the trend is your friend. You always want to be looking for a trade in the direction of the trend. So the age old saying, the trend is your friend. If you have been trading for any length of time, I'm sure you have heard this at least one or not many times. As common as the saying may be, it has never lost any significance in the financial markets, especially when it comes to trading inside bars. So in fact, Trading with the trend is the only way to trade an inside bar trade setup. So even though you may get a break upward that gives you bullish entry price, if the trend is down, do not trade it. Three, it's all about the breakout. The best inside bar setup formed just after a break of consolidation where the preceding trend is set to resume. Remember, trend is your friend. For this reason, it is quite simple. A period of consolidation within a broader trend is the market's way of regrouping. In an uptrend, the consolidation is triggered when longs decide to begin taking profits. This causes a market pullback where new buyers step in and buy. So as we can see here, you can see that push. We have a uptrend that moved into consolidation we have the breakout of the consolidation and we have the continuation of the move up. So what we got was our mother bar with our baby bar, which gave us the price point in which we should enter. And that trade was been a, a bullish trade. And we would have traded here and would have ridden the rest of that trend upward. Four is you have to always set your risk reward ratio. A favorable risk reward ratio is needed for any setup taken here. This is true whether you're trading an inside bar, pin bar, or wedge breakout. Each and every strategy needs to be accompanied by a favorable risk to reward ratio. 
So what's a favorable ratio? It means always keeping your risk to no more than half the potential reward. So if you think you can take 200 pips, your stop loss can be no more than 100 pips away from your entry price. If using a more aggressive stop loss strategy, that means selecting inside bars that form near the upper or the lower range of the mother bar. This will allow you to achieve a much more favorable risk to reward ratio. That means, but it also gives you less opportunities, but you have to look for the specific setup and opportunity. And last, size matters. Last but not least, the size of the inside bar relative to the mother bar is extremely important. This idea of piggybacks off the number four of the risk reward ratio, where an inside bar forms an upper or lower range of the mother bar. In my experience, the smaller the inside bar is relative to the mother bar, the greater your chances are of experiencing a profitable setup. I or my rule of thumb or what my eye looks for is I'm looking for a big, broad mother bar and a tiny, and that's why I always call it tiny baby, tiny little baby bar. Because you know what, when you have a big, broad mother bar and then you have a big, long second bar, uh, the, you know, you both have very big candles with a lot of movement. Doesn't really mean consolidation and a breakout. So remember that an inside bar represents consolidation after a large move. This is what makes the pattern so lucrative. The fact that we are trading a breakout after a period of consolidation. Therefore, the tighter the consolidation is, the more volatile the ensuring breakout will be. Of course, this isn't always the case, but in my experience, it holds true more often than not, especially when you get a small little baby bar. <clears throat> What doesn't matter, what doesn't matter when trading this particular pattern is whether the inside bar itself is bullish or bearish. In other words, if a market is an uptrend and the inside bar forms inside of a large bullish candle, it doesn't matter if that inside bar is bullish or bearish. Same holds true when trading a bearish pattern. The only thing that matters is whether the mother bar is bullish or bearish. The formation of the, of the mother bar in combination with the trend is what tells you which way to trade an inside bar setup. But remember, we're only going to trade in the direction of the trend. So you only have 50% opportunity because the other 50 may be a beautiful breakout, but we're not trading against the trend. So remember, we are not really trading an inside bar strategy, but in this case, we are trading two strategies and using the inside bars for our entry point. So our first trade is actually a resistance holding trade. We are using the inside bar, the sign of lower volatility uh, to position short in that context. Keep in mind that the first trade is actually going against the trend that was occurring. So the question is, do we need a perfect inside bar? When the price action completes an inside candle on the chart, you should mark the lower, low and the high of the inside bar consolidation range. These two levels are used to trigger a potential trade. The inside candle clues us into the eventual breakout and likelihood of a continuation pattern. In simple terms, if the price action interrupts the range upward, then you should go long. If the price action breaks the range downward, then you should trade it to the short side. So the question is, do you need a perfect inside bar? Well, I am a firm rule. I only want high probability trades. So I need everything to set up 100% because otherwise, you are taking a more risky trade. Okay. So it's important to make sure that you are taking the best trade possible. So if you wanna learn more about using an inside bar as your trading trigger, 
you can do so by going to alvexo.com and look going to their education center. But there's no doubt that inside bars can be a profitable way to trade the Forex market. However, it isn't a setup that occurs often, at least not in a favorable context. It is why I don't advocate using the inside bar as your only setup to trade. I combine many different small strategies. I'll use my indecision candles. I'll use my support and resistance trade. I'll use my inside bar because otherwise, if I sat there all day long just waiting for an inside bar trade and then uh, you know filtering it out, I'd never get a trade in. What I want to do is when I see price moving and a price pattern developing, I want to then go in my toolbox and find which strategy will work best. So it is therefore important to treat inside bars as another tool inside your trading toolbox rather than the toolbox itself. The inside bar setup is capable of producing consistent profits, but only to the trader who mines the five characteristics discussed. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. You can watch a recorded version of this class and you can learn more by going to alvexo.com and learning and reading all about this. Tonight was just to open your eyes a little bit, show you a potential opportunity, and then give you the freedom to learn to master this particular type of trading. Have a great night and thank you for supporting Alvexo and investing.com. Bye now.